Today I want to show you how you can build your own tools in Fusion or in DaVinci Resolve Fusion page using macros. Macros are a great way to reuse parts of your Fusion flow and to build your own assets. You can use those macros and export them into the template library of Fusion or even if you are just doing text effects or certain uh, overlay effects, you can export them into the titles section of the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. Last week I showed you how you can use Fusion Comps uh, in editing clips and reuse them via power bins and things like that. This is very useful if you just have, let's say, titles or certain overlays, logos, graphics, which you put on top of a video. Now with macros, you can even build reusable effects that you use inside your Fusion Flow. I have created a very simple two note effect and with this, let's get started. So I just have two notes here in my flow. The first one is just a simple text note, which has an animated scaling uh, size parameter over the first 10 frames. So this is all that's happening here, just a simple text scaling up. And then I use the duplicate note. Duplicate note just uh, duplicates whatever input comes in in 2D and just puts it on top of each other and creates a certain number of copies of the input. In this case, I'm making 200 copies, but each copy has a time offset of minus half a frame. So that means that in each frame, I have two more copies coming uh, into the into the new frame into the picture so i'm creating lots of lots of copies now each copy here has there's no um, uh, offset for the copy so each copy as per this page here uh, it remains in the default position, but there is this jitter tab here and jitter just means a random uh, modification of the previous parameters. So in this jitter tab, I have both X and Y coordinates, a certain offset, which randomly um, is being added to each copy between zero and 0.5. So it goes all over the frame by this and the size randomly changes a bit. So that's for the, the final size of the logo or the text and the angle also varies between minus 90 and plus 90 degrees with this uh, jitter addition. So this way I just have text flying in like this and I want to use this as a very simple transition. Of course you can do this tutorial with any other combination of nodes, just uh, create any effect whatever you want and then you can build a macro out of this. I will now select those nodes. You can uh, drag or via control select the nodes. I right click on the first one, then you have here this macro section and I select create macro. In this big menu here, you have lots and lots of parameters and these are all the possible parameters that these two tools um, have. And you can uh, minimize this so that you see. So first I have my text tool and then I have my duplicate tool. And the order of these, by the way, depends on which you select first. If you, um, if, if I go back, uh, no, nothing to save and select the duplicate first and then the text and then create my macro, then they will appear in opposite order. So this is uh, important because it also determines the order in which parameters later appear in your final macro. So the way which you select them is actually of consequence, although not for the logic, but for your organization and layout at the end. So I select them this way, text, then duplicate, right click, macro, create macro. First, I want to give this macro a name, so I'd call it text fill. And then, oh, I can think I can even do spaces here. Then I select whatever parameters I want to control in my final macro tool. So my, I definitely want to be able to change the text. So styled text, maybe also font and style and perhaps even the color. So these are things that I might typically want to be able to control later, size perhaps also. And then uh, I ignore the rest of the text for now, but in the duplicate, I also want to control a few things and I definitely want to control the number of copies and perhaps these jitter parameters that I uh, just showed you. 
So maybe the uh, random seed randomized this, the center, and then let's say the angle and perhaps the size parameters. So these were the ones that I set originally. You can also see that I set them. So you see here the default value and the default value has been taken automatically from what I have done here before. So whatever you create, the parameters that you set here are already being taken into the macro and are stored as default parameter. And then if you export the parameter by uh, selecting them, then you can later change them in the uh, resulting tool that we are uh, building just now. So you also have minimum and maximum. This is the minimum and maximum range of each of these sliders. So each slider has a default minimum and maximum. You can always type, right? You can type the parameter, but otherwise you have like a default uh, from uh, where to where the slider goes. So you can uh, adjust even that here if you want to. OK, I have selected my parameters. One thing to notice, you can also select the input and outputs. So you have for a macro tool, usually at the end you need one output. And here I get the output of the duplicate one. So this is my output for my later flow. So I go from here to the media out. Um, but you can also select inputs. So for example, if I want a mask input from the duplicate, I could export that input here, could uh, select the effect mask here. Now, I don't need this, but if you are building tools which have later you want to be able to attach masks, you want to be able to attach inputs and so on, then you have to select all the input parameters that should be available at the end for the final tool that you're building. In this case, no need, so I just leave it and I go to File, Save, and this opens my macros folder, which is currently empty on this installation. I have a file name, which I just uh, keep the macro name typically, and I can save. Before I do this, let me save the file path here because I will go to this file path and show you something here. So I will take the file path from here and I click save. And there's no confirmation message, but you can trust that it worked and close it. And you can see that it worked because first of all, it will appear in the macro section here under edit macro if you want to uh, edit these checkboxes uh, again that we just worked on. Or you can just bring the macro into the fusion flow from the control spacebar menu. So if I enter control spacebar where I get all my tools, I will also have my macro now in this tool menu. So if I now enter text fill, that was the name text fill. I should, sorry, misspell text fill. There it is. I have, uh, I see the name of my macro now appearing in the regular tool section. Edit, and here is my macro, here is my tool. So I have built a custom tool. I have exactly the parameters that I just selected. And this tool now does the exact same thing what my flow uh, before here did for me. It has only one output, so I can connect it here instead of these. These I can now remove. I am done. I have my custom tool and this will be now available whenever I open Resolve and whenever I go uh, into the Fusion page, I can use this tool. Now, I cannot, unfortunately, in Resolve, I cannot find this tool here in the tool section. I'm not exactly sure why. I think in Fusion Studio it's possible there's a macro folder. There's no folder here in the tool section that I could find. Um, but if you want, you can export your macros into the template section here that you see in the effects library. And let me show you how. So first, let me go back to the folder that I just um, saw in the, when I saved the macro, I go to the same folder. It is this one here. I see my file, textfill.setting. This .setting file is everything that is now related to this macro. Um, just for your info, this file I can also drag and drop. So I get a tool directly like this. You can add more of these settings files if you find macros online that you want to use. Just put them in the same folder and you have them automatically available. Uh, I will provide this one here also for download. So if you want, you can just download it, put it into your macro folder, and you are able to um, find it. Um, if you don't find the macro folder the way I just did, you can check. It should be in Windows under Users, Username, App Data, something, something, something. So it's a, a long path. Um, this path will also be in the uh, noted in the manual if you if you don't find it. But typically, just check where the macros are being saved, and you will find it. Um, I will now uh, copy this setting file 
and go just one folder up. So here is my macro folder and down there is a templates folder. And in this templates folder you have two sections. One is called edit and one is called fusion. Fusion you can, uh, it's empty for me, you can create folders in here and organize your own uh, templates this way. And you can just paste a macro into this template section. That's one way of using them. So here let me just uh, create a folder, um, my macros, and perhaps that's even better than uh, the macro original macro section because this I will show you later where it appears. So this is for Fusion and for the edit page you have here an edit folder. Now in this part there is a titles folder and I can put it in here. Um, however, I cannot add additional folders here. I tried and it is not being recognized by DaVinci Resolve. I'm not exactly sure why I can't add my own folders here, why Blackmagic hasn't that Im implemented that, or maybe they will add it sometime soon, I don't know. Um, it would be nice to be able to sort your titles and organize things and so on if you have more stuff in here. Uh, however, I guess the reason why they haven't thought about that yet or haven't done that is that from the edit page your fusion options are limited because you can only add at the moment at least only add effects that are on top like titles and titles is the name of the one folder that is actually here. So maybe that's why they have restricted it or they have just not implemented anything there yet. I have put this into the titles which is my only folder here and I now have to quickly restart DaVinci Resolve uh, in order for these folders to be loaded. And here I'm back in DaVinci Resolve in my current project. And first of all from the edit page, because I put it into this titles folder, I can now find it here under titles and here I find text fill and I can drop this as an editing title. So now I, I have it here coming as an overlay like this. So if I want to do a transition to white or so, this might already do it or if I want to use this as some crazy title effect. Um, again, these titles and all the fusion effects that appear here in the effects library from the edit page, you can only place them as individual clips like this, um, but you cannot like modify an existing clip with these. It would be nice if that was possible, like you know the way these video transitions work. Here these you can uh, drop over a clip, right, like this. Um, but this is not possible at the moment with fusion effects. Um, would be nice but is not there. So this way I am restricted with what I can actually do from the edit page. But now if I go into fusion, let me go from this clip over into fusion then I can now find them in my templates section and I find here my own, um, my macros folder, that's the folder that I just created. So here I can actually create folders and organize whatever I, I load on additional macros that I either create myself or might find online. And I have here my text fill and can um, bring that in. Now let me uh, make a very simple transition with this. I will just connect this as the um, to the media in to the alpha channel. Uh, this way my text that I'm creating here is um, masking out my, my foreground. And if I now look at the media in, you see that my image is being masked out by my text effect. And if I go back to the edit page, and here I have my transition in full screen. Okay, looks a little bit chaotic and the ending is not smooth. So if you really want to use this, you could do some polishing, but the point is not the transition, but the macros. And I hope you enjoyed that part. By the way, if you are looking at the footage right now, this is from uh, two set extension tutorials where I added the uh, castle in the background and the house and stuff like this. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, have a look at this. Um, otherwise, tell me if you have any questions and next week I'm gonna do a longer tutorial. I will go into 3D space. So I'm already looking forward to this. And that's it for today. My name is Bernd. Thanks for watching. See you next time.